Oh my god, Angela, what are we looking for? Homeless people. Homelessness Hits Home, Chicago. A documentary by Amani Aldeban, Julio Abreu, Imran Syed, Liz Marin, Yesenia Esparza, and Angela Tarafa. I am really recording. My daddy's still in this place. Dude, that's so awesome. What happened? I used to live around here. Really? Yeah, I grew up around here. That's pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. I, know, I don't really go around here too much this far. Yeah, it, turns, it starts turning black when you go there. Angela, where do you think we can find homeless people? Uh, I really don't Like know. right down there, probably. Hopefully soon. Yeah, me too. Away. Yeah, you guys want to see me old place? There are going to be homeless people there. Oh, dude, yeah, let's go, man. Homeless people where we gotta go. Yeah. Jai Ho! These make so many memories. Dude, this is awesome. This is, this is like a little documentary we're starting. This will be fun. Is it weird that I like recording? Homelessness has become a rising epidemic in Chicago. With thousands of homeless people engulfing the streets of Chicago, it's hard not to notice for some. This is a story of a man named Ronald Davis in which he shares his heartfelt story of what he deals with on a daily basis showing both the struggle and strife of life as a homeless man in Chicago. My name is Ronald Davis. I've been on the street for about a year and a half now. Well, I come from the suburbs. Life, you know, which is 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 is, is rough. And uh, I mean, I didn't slept in Lower Wacker. I didn't slept on the bridges. I didn't slept on the in little cardboard boxes and stuff. You know, just surviving. Especially in the winter time is the hardest time. And like, uh, I go to a few lot of applications for a job and stuff. They look at me. You know, I'm not looking presentable. And then they, well, we'll call you. Leave a number. But how can I leave a number when I don't have a phone? So, I, it's just a struggle out here. You know, I just. You know, from day to day, people, uh, I come out here and panhandle with my cup right here at the Metro train station. People come off, bring me sandwiches and stuff like this here. And uh, I start out in my morning about 6 o'clock. You know, sometimes I don't even have enough to go to the flop house. You know, sometimes the flop house is a cheap place and they number 16 bucks for 24 hours right over there on Clark and Van Buren. And uh, a lot of times I don't have enough money for that, so I had to end up sleeping in the park or on one of these benches downtown or something like this. And then the security guards come and run you off about 5 or 6 in the morning. So by 6 o'clock I started panhandling and trying to survive. And uh, like I said before, some days I don't even have enough to get around, so I just sleep on the sleep street. But I depend on the people that's coming off the train because most of them I give them respect. You know, most of them like me. They come out and give me clothes and food and stuff like this here so I can survive. Give me a few bucks and everything and I add it up at the end of the day and get me a little room for the night. And whenever I'm not fortunate enough to get the room, I just sleep in the street wherever I can. It's really humiliating to be shaking a cup 24 hours a day and people just look at you like you're some kind of little bum, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I have had people to walk past me and say, get a job, bum. And I said, wait a minute, I'm not a bomb, I'm a human being. And and it's, and it's hard. But uh, after the end of the day, when when people go home and everybody get on the message train, and then my, and then I just, feel so bad that I can't be going on, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, but uh, it's really emotional because I'm really trying to get myself together and get off this tree, you know, I, mean, I don't care what it's doing, if I can get a job and through this humility, you know, I mean, you just lose all your humility when you're sick and a cook begging. you know what I'm saying, I mean, it, you know, I mean, you know, you can look at a person and tell if they getting your respect tonight, you know what I mean? A lot of people look at you like you're just a, a piece of chrome, you know? I had one guy walk past me and talked about me so bad, and then I just looked at him. I said, God bless you, sir. He walked past and went went down the street, come right back. And he said, you know what, man, I had a bad day. He said, I'm sorry for even 
calling you that. He said, because I know you're a human being. He said, would you accept my apologies? I said, apologies accepted. He went in his pocket and gave me 30 bucks and said, go get you a room and get you something to eat. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, no matter what people think about me, I know I'm a human first. And just because I'm down on my luck, don't give nobody no excuse to call me no bomb. Because I'm not. In Chicago, there's been a rise in demand for food. According to an article titled, Hunger and Homelessness Remain Most Pressing Issues of, for U.S. Cities by the U.S. Conference of Mayors, budgets for emergency food purchases in Chicago have increased by 11%. According to the Chicago Tribune article titled Can Chicago End Homelessness by Deborah Shelton, the Chief Executive Officer of the Chicago Alliance to End Homelessness, Noni Brandon said, We strongly believe that homelessness can be eliminated, and we believe that we can be the first major city in the nation to do it well. NBC Chicago's Marion Brooks interviews the Executive Director and First Deputy Commissioner at Chicago Department of Family Supportive Services, to discuss the homeless count in Chicago. John Pfeiffer is the first deputy commissioner for the Chicago Department of Family and Support, and Jim Lobianco is the executive director of Streetwise, an organization that works with homeless people in Chicago. So I'm going to start with you, John. So what, what will the city do with this information? Well, we How collect, will it help? We collect this data every two years at the request of the federal government. It helps us to plan the point in time count gives us much more detailed information about who is experiencing homelessness, what the uh, issues pro that you know, propel them into the state of homelessness. So for example, we know that only 14% of the people in our shelter system are currently employed. As part of our efforts to address homelessness, we have a new plan in the city of Chicago, Plan 2.0. One of its major priorities is addressing that high unemployment rate. So we are putting more investment in the area of employment services. Similarly, about 25% of the folks in the shelters are affected by domestic violence. So uh -huh. Mayor Manuel is very concerned about this issue in particular, and we are going to make some additional investments in expanding shelter availability for families impacted by domestic violence. And I, I know a lot of people may wonder why you do this in January. There's actually a reason behind it. What's the, what's the point of the coldest time? The reason is that the shelters are fullest in you know, the cold January weather, so we expect to reach as many people as possible on the night of the count in January. That, that's, it makes perfect sense when you think about it that way. So, uh, Jim, are there enough services in the city? I know you guys are working really hard, but is it, is it adequate? Are there enough services, even private services, to help the folks in the area that are homeless? Chicago is very lucky to have a significant amount of social services across a range of needs, from adult homelessness to domestic violence, and especially uh, Mayor Manuel has really made an emphasis on youth homelessness. So there are a lot of services in Chicago. Shelter beds, there are enough shelter beds seemingly. I think the biggest problem is that somebody who may be experiencing homelessness on the north side, the shelters may not have beds available there. But across the city, traditionally, there's always been open beds in the system. And for years, the city has run an emergency transportation system for the homeless. So um, to this day, the city of Chicago is able to get somebody who needs a bed to a bed wherever that may be. So there's no reason for anyone to have to sleep on the street. Well, that's good to know because you, you still see that happening, though, and you wonder why. Why does that still happen? Why is it when there are the shelters, are there still people sleeping out on the street? You know, um, lots of reasons. Some folks have had bad experiences in institutional care. Some people have mental health issues and are distrustful. Our job is to reach out to them and engage them. We build trust over time with our street outreach workers and bring them in. It's very, very cold out there these days, so you know, I encourage any Chicagoan in, in the next few days when temperatures are below freezing to call 311 if they need to go to a warming center or a shelter. And Jim, how vulnerable is this population, the homeless population? Weather aside, sleeping on the street is one of the most dangerous things you can do. It is physically unsafe, but it also takes a huge toll on your health. This weather in particular is incredibly dangerous for people to be on the street. Um, so even though there may be many reasons an individual may choose not to go in or an individual may be suffering from an illness that uh, prevents them from making a good decision, the reality is that the streets of Chicago are the most unsafe place to be if you're living day in and day out. So finding a service 
Streetwise, for instance, functions as a warming shelter. We serve hot meals five days a week. You can come to us during the daytime, build a relationship. We'll try to place you in housing, supportive housing, transitional housing. Um, but the most important thing is for men and women who are vulnerable on the streets of Chicago to take advantage of all the services that are available. Okay, and you uh, have mentioned, John, we have to run right now, but you mentioned there are about, at least in the, during the last count, about 6,600 sheltered and unsheltered. When we did this count two years ago, about 6,600 people. So we'll have the results of the count we just conducted in about three months. Okay, well, thank you both so much for your hard work and for coming in to talk about it. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it.